Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. I thought I'd show you our morning view. As you can see, we have, I would say five, six, probably close to six inches of snow already. Started falling after midnight and it is now 8.15. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that before I show you what I wanna show you. Um, so I'm sure you've noticed I've been, if you're on my Instagram or my Facebook, you know I've been doing a lot of watercoloring. Oh, look at that. My mother-in-law turns 85 tomorrow and today we are all going to take her and her husband out to eat and go back to their place for cake. So I made a two layer yellow cake and chocolate frosting from scratch. <laughs> and then my husband picked up some pretty miniature roses for her and we have the candles. And we'll be meeting my kids and then my brother and his wife as well. So it'll be, or his, Doug's brother and his wife. Anyway, this is where I watercolor on my dining room table because here's the reason. Number one, more room because my craft room is other stuff and the desk isn't as big and I don't want to clean it up every time I want to do something. Uh, we don't really eat at our table unless we have guests. So my husband is very nicely letting me leave my mess here. And um, the lighting is good. So it's a good place to watercolor. And I just want to show you my supplies. And, well, that was smart. I, <laughs> I turned off my video. I just want to show you my supplies and what I'm doing. So I have two palettes of 48 colors. So these are my watercolors. So if I shut these down, you can see the tins. And these are Medine watercolor tins. Now you can get these three ways. You can get them already with a palette. So that's what this one is. And they come in three colors, dark blue, light blue, and pink. And um, so I got these last year. And these are the colors that came in the, the full palette. And this opens up right here and provides a nice place if you wanna do a mixing of colors down here and here's all the colors. So I usually just have this open and here's this one. They also come in empty, ready for you to put your half pans in or full pans. So 24 full pans or 48 half pans, I use the half pans. And you can get it uh, either with empty half, empty pans or nothing at all. And I got this one with nothing because I don't have tubes of watercolor. And I put in three of my mini ones in here. So I put the Prima Decadent Pies, the Prima Woodlands, the Jane Davenport, her gold case, and then her teal case. Um, I've got more Prima ones on my mini palettes on my <laughs> birthday list. So I'm hoping my husband and children will get me some, but here's the colors I use. So I just did, um, divided it into three and each one is from a different palette. The other thing I use is this, um, how do you say, gouache, the gouache and I use the white. If I'm not using the white gouache for something, because that will go over your stuff and your watercolor will go over your watercolor and show where it's these, these white colors that they stick in your watercolor pans don't really do anything. And then I'll use this pen, this is a Una, a Signal um, white gel pen, which is actually my favorite of the white gel pens. Back here I have uh, my brushes. And um, let me show you what I've got. Hang on a second, I'm just gonna pull my chair out and sit down. Oh, I do have another watercolor set. I don't really use it that much. Um, it's the Koi, it's a traveling set, um, and it's got a, quite a few colors. So I keep um, a dropper on hand to drop water on these just to kind of reactivate the ones I, tend, I want to use. And I also will put it in my ceramic dishes to reactivate or add more water to my watercolors. So I love these ceramic dishes. I really prefer ceramic over plastic. I just like the feel of it. 
and then I just leave it in there and reactivate with water if I need the colors. I also have a spray bottle just in case, and then I have this little ensemble thing um, that I just keep in, like, you know, makeup remover pads and cotton balls and stuff if I want to, like, clear some, make some white space on something I painted. Okay, and then my brushes. So I did just buy this, um, I did. I bought it online and picked it up at Michael's and didn't realize how, it's like 12 inches long, it's huge. Um, and it's a filbert brush, but I thought it would be good for doing like a wash. So I did not expect it to be that big though, it's kind of ridiculous. This is a beautiful big mop brush. My daughter and her family gave me for Christmas. It's a size 16. It's a round mop, and I really love it because it um, I can do my backgrounds and my journals with this. And then I have a small mop brush. Um, this is, uh, it says a half, half size. Um, but the mop brushes pick up lots of water. That's why I like them. Then I just have round brushes. So I have a 12. I need to get a 10. I don't have a 10. I have a 12, an 8, um, this is a 2, a 4, and on did I have, that's all I have in this particular style. Okay, so these are um, Nick Pro, and they're round brushes. I have some other round brushes. Um, cause I was trying to get some of the sizes I don't have. So this is a six and this is the Princeton Elite brush. And I believe I have some more Princeton Elite brushes or maybe not. Nope. This one is Shenzhen, Shez, I can't pronounce it, Shenzhen and it's a number one liner. So I really like this one a lot. I use it. This is a number four Princeton Lauren round brush. So I meant to buy, okay, a six and a four. So um, I don't know why I bought a four when I already had a four. Who knows? This is a um, script liner, a number three. And this is a ankle brush. This is Windsor and Newton. Um, a 10 millimeter uh, angle brush. And this last but not least is a number four Princeton Elite um, brush and it's like a fan, a fan brush. So those are all my brushes. <clears throat> I still wanna get a 10 and I wanna get a smaller filbert. And, and one with like a softer angle to it as well. Okay, so then um, let me just grab over here and my container. And this is the container I use. I bought it at Michael's. It really holds everything well. So I just have my um, masking tape for when I tape something down. And then I have this stuff. This is a brush cleaner. So um, you just, I can't open it, but it's, um, you just... You can either recondition or clean your brush, um, depending on how you do it, and it really is good stuff, really works. Um, you can get it in a much smaller, like a quarter of this size. Um, I, there just didn't have to be the small one, so I bought the big one. Um, my three jars of water. The reason for this is this one it gets the dirtiest, and then this is the second one that I do my second cleaning of my brush. And then when they both get too dirty, or at the very end when I want to clean my brushes, I'll use this jar of water. Inside, I have these little yellow things, and they are called paint pucks. So they stick to the bottom, and then when you clean your brush, you just rub them uh, lightly against the bottom, and it cleans it much better. Um, the other thing I do is I just keep rags down for sopping up any water, um, I use these, like an extra thick, very soft paper towel or napkin, and I use that for blotting my um, brushes on. I do this when I'm going to just do a piece of, of watercolor paper, then I just lay it on here and tape it on. 
this. Um, I've been using some watercolor books. So here is one I've been using. Um, my friend Kim gave this to me, sent this to me. This is Watercolor in the Ocean by Dana Fox. And Dana Fox has two books, Watercolor in the Ocean and Watercolor in the Forest. She tells, shows you exactly what to do. And then there's a sketch on the next page and you color it follow, following the instructions. So I did that fish one and I did this whale one. Okay. Then you have her watercolor in the forest. Watercolor with me in the forest. This one is my favorite. Um, I've done the hedgehog. I did the fur. Um, oh, I ruined this squirrel. I'm gonna try and go back and fix it, but I overworked the page. You can see it's, it's a horrible disaster. <laughs> I did these mushrooms. So I have done some that have turned out very nicely and the acorns but I did have one messy one the other book I really enjoy using is called the 15 minute watercolor masterpieces by Anna Koliadich I'm sure I butchered that name but she just shows you what to do how to paint I did the cherry tree um, I did like this one and I just have a couple other cheap watercolor books that come in those kits and um, haven't used those yet. Now in here, you can just see some of the things I've done. Um, I was just practicing blending and practicing with my colors yesterday. So that's kind of what this stuff is. Just practice, because you do need to practice. Learn what your colors can do. This was from Anna that watercolor masterpiece is from her Instagram. She usually does a painting every day, and I really liked this one, so I did that. And this is what I did from her book, The Fall Scene and The Cherry Tree, and I did this from her book as well. Really liked that. Here's some of the watercolor things I'm using. The paper, I have this pad, Master's Touch, and this is a square. This is cold press, eight by eight inch, 140 pound paper. My daughter gave me this. I'm very excited about using this. She got this, I think at Dick Blick's. This is a fluid watercolor paper, uh, cold press finish, 140 pound. So I'm excited about that. And I have this one. This is Artist Loft. Um, this is 140 pound as well, cold press. And then the rest are just pieces of watercolor paper I cut up to use um, for different sizes and just have it used yet. So that is what I do. And I've been trying to, I want to practice like doing, doing this every day because I really want to get better at watercoloring. So that is my little plan and I just when I'm not using these I do want to keep them shut they don't need to like dry out a whole lot so and I just use this this is a ceramic dish I have when I'm painting and I have the colors that brushes I'm using I just lay them out here so that I can just pick them up I do want to get a brush rust sometime but um, yeah not yet anyway I hope you enjoyed um, seeing the things that I use and what I do. Oh, and when I need to dry, I have this little cheapo heat gun. Um, I got at Goodwill for two bucks and it works perfect. So yeah, that's all I do. That's everything I have. I watch some YouTube videos. Um, if I remember, I'm terrible about remembering, but if I remember, I'll put the link down to um, some of my favorite watercolor YouTubers that I've been watching and that have been helping me and inspiring me. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and thank you for watching. Bye.